There are several essentials for any bowel anastomosis. There should be no tension. There should be a good blood supply to both ends of the bowel. There should be accurate apposition of the bowel ends with an immaculate and accurate suturing technique. We are now going to demonstrate an end-to-end -end anastomosis that might follow resection of a lesion such as this. We are going to do an end-to-end -end anastomosis using interrupted sutures on a mobile section of bowel. In the actual demonstration, you will see resection of a lesion, but from your point of view, during the exercise, assume resection of the lesion and proceed straight to an anastomosis. When actually performing a resection, the pedicle will need to be divided, as you have already done in the hemostasis exercise, and the two ends of the pedicle appropriately ligated as seen here. Once again, get into the habit every single time of tying a properly laid reef knot and snugging the ligatures down carefully. The pedicle on the actual mesentery base is the most important one because if this ligature were to slip, this would lead to significant hemorrhage. Once the pedicle of the section of bowel to be removed has been adequately ligated, Clamps may be used according to a surgeon's preference. Crushing clamps, as you see here, may be used and placed on the piece of bowel that is going to be resected. A crushing clamp may be placed either side of a lesion. Of course, with this a tumour, a much greater margin of resection would be used, but this is merely to demonstrate the principles of anastomosis. A soft, non-crushing clamp may be placed upon the bowel to be anastomosed. Some surgeons prefer to place it just across the width of the lumen of the bowel to prevent spillage of bowel contents. Other surgeons like to place it very gently across the mesentery to minimize bleeding from the cut edge of the bowel. The lesion can then be resected. Once the bowel has been divided and the lesion removed, we're left with the task of an end-to-end -end anastomosis of the two remaining bowel ends. For this anastomosis, we're going to use an interrupted extramucosal suture. We therefore start the anastomosis at the mesenteric border. Insert a suture right in the mesenteric angle of the bowel in an extramucosal manner, and then across to the other loop of bowel, again inserting the suture in an extramucosal manner. Place both ends of the suture material into a hemostat to use as a stay. Then for stability, insert a similar stay on the anti-mesenteric border, taking care to use an extramucosal suture, pulling it through gently and placing it in a hemostat. We now have the bowel nicely controlled and set up for an interrupted suture anastomosis. We will start again towards the mesenteric border and insert an extramucosal suture 
approximately five millimeters from our original stay suture. This can then be tied either by an instrument tie as seen here, although many surgeons may prefer to use a hand tied knot. The important aspect is to ensure that it is a carefully laid reef knot. Continue to insert sutures in an extra mucosal manner across the anterior wall of the bowel, ligating as you go. Again, each suture should be approximately 5 mm away from its neighbour. It is important to ensure that the knots are not tied too tightly, causing strangulation of the tissues, and yet not so loose that there would be potential for leakage. Work across the entire anterior wall and then tie the stay sutures. Do not cut the stay sutures, but replace them into the hemostats. We are now in a position, having completed the anterior wall, to rotate the bowel to perform posterior anastomosis. Pass the anti-mesenteric stay under the bowel and re-clip it, and then gently pull on the mesenteric stay and the bowel will rotate as seen here, to allow the posterior layer of the anastomosis to be sutured under direct vision. Once again, insert the sutures in an extra mucosal manner, approximately 5 mm apart. Tie these carefully with a well laid reef knot, again, either using an instrument tie or a hand tie. Continue to work along the posterior layer of the anastomosis in an identical manner as was done for the anterior wall. It's very important to ensure that the angles of the anastomosis are adequately sutured and approximated. Once the entire posterior layer of interrupted sutures have been inserted, we're in a position to return the bowel to its normal position. Once again, pass the anti-mesenteric stay suture back under the bowel and return the stay sutures to their original position. The stays can then be cut. In the operative situation, the mesenteric defect needs to be closed to prevent internal herniation. Remember, it is vital not to catch the vessels lying on the border of the defect. The non-crushing clamps can be removed at this stage. For the purpose of this exercise, we are going to excise the anastomosis to look at it from the inside. Be careful to preserve as much bowel length as possible and not sacrifice too much as you will need this for future exercises. Cut open the bowel and the minimal amount of suture material should be seen within the lumen if the extra mucosal technique has been adequately followed. 